Welcome to the fourth stop on our virtual walking tour of a rainbow of Kitten County houses. I'm Deborah Wesley of the Local History and Genealogy Department at the Kitten County Public Library located at the Covington Branch. Over the summer we have been visiting a rainbow of houses and are sharing the colorful homes histories in addition to the homes inhabitants and their histories and stories. We're also creating Instagram and blog posts coinciding with each home so I invite you to check those out. Here's a listing of all of the, the rainbow of homes we are talking about and if you've missed one you can go back and find them on our Kitten County Public Library YouTube page, Facebook page, um, or call us and we'll help you find them. Here's a reminder of the homes we are presenting during our Rainbow of Houses. And the house we're going to speak about today is in the lower left hand corner, the Green House. Also I want to mention back on our tour stop one of the Red House, my colleague presented hints about the houses and the hint that, that goes with, with the house I'm talking about is one of these houses was the home to a popular school teacher who has a park named in her honor. And we'll talk about her. So this is the greenhouse that I started to research and picked back in January of this year. I drive by this house on the way to work every day and Around, June, around May, the house started changing colors to white. I came to find out that someone had bought the house and they were restoring it from green and turning it into a white house with black trim. And as of this month, it's almost finished. And so if you go down Russell Street, you will um, see 1222 Russell Street is painted black and white instead of green. Twelve twenty two Russell Street is an American vernacular Victorian brick home built about nineteen oh four. Originally had three it has three floors, three livable floors, and it originally had one bath, but now it has two and a half baths, I was I was informed. Um, it has a front wraparound porch that goes around to the right side. There are two beautiful silver dollar trees on, on either side of it. And um, the picture on the left is when it was beginning to be painted white. And then the two pictures uh, with the porch are the ones I took recently. Um, there are former residents that we'll talk about today were notable trailblazer African-American families. So this map, this picture shows uh, several maps, Sanborn fire insurance maps. And the purpose of this is to explain um, that from when it was built in 1904 to 1917, the house was originally numbered 1224 Russell and not 1222 as it is today. And as genealogists, we use Sanborn maps, city directories, and other resources to, to get at the best we can at when they were built. Um, so in the 1909 one, you can see by the arrow, uh, you might be able to see it says 1224 over 1222 which helps us uh, realize that. If you're more interested in learning about how to do this back on the Red Horse House tour my colleague went into more detail explaining the process or just come into our department and we'll help you research your property to figure out when it was built. So this is a timeline of residents, the primary families that lived in 1222 Russell Street over from 1904 when it was built to 2020. The first family who, the first family to live in the home was John Bernard and Jos Josephine Fleurledge and their family. 
Um, they're listed on both the 1910 and 1920 census. Both John B. and Josephine's parents were German immigrants. And the family eventually, in 1922, moved out to Fort Thomas, which is why they left the property. The next, per, next family to live there were the Dunham family, Dr. Norman Earl Dunham, who was a physician and surgeon. And um, they are listed on the 1930 census with, his, with uh, he and his wife, Sadie. They left the house in approximately 1940. On the 1940 census, the Hargraves are listed as residents in 1222 Russell. And they stayed there until their passing in the 70s, 1970s. Uh, they were, we're gonna talk about them some more, they were both long-term teachers at Lincoln Grant School in Covington. And finally, the last family that lived there from the 70s till recent was the Tolliver family. A neighbor who lives next door today said the area was known as the West Side. And he said that the neighborhood was one that it takes a village to raise a kid, that everybody looked out after everyone. Understandably why prominent trailblazer African American Professionals like Dr. Dunham and the Hargraves um, moved to the, uh, the, the neighborhood and lived in 1222 Russell. So this is a, a side of Dr. Norman Earl Dunham's family tree, which I'm gonna focus on. I was blessed to uh, to connect with one of his descendants who gave me this picture of him and some other family pictures and some stories I'll share. Dr. Norman Earl Dunham was born in Kentucky in 1893, probably Scott County, Lexington or Lexington area. He was the second son of Levi and Louise Lulu Scott Dunham. His father, Levi, was a farmer, and Norman often assisted him in farming in Louisville, where he lived from time to time in order to get money to pay for his education. His father was also a former slave, which I'll talk about shortly. Um, Norman's sister, Ruth Butler, she was an educator in Ohio, moved to Ohio. And finally, his older brother, Henry, on the left, who was born in 1890. He spent most of his life farming with his dad in Louisville and died in a tragic fall um, while he was, had another job employed at Lafayette Hotel in Lexington in 1926. So Norman um, attended school in Fayette County in Lexington, Kentucky. The other person on the slide I wanna emphasize uh, he meet, he meet, well, is his wife, Sadie Lyerson Dunham, I'll talk more about, and his maternal uncle, Dr. Robert Bird Scott, which is right here. He, um, he probably was an inspiration for Norman to become a doctor because he also went to Mahari. And I, I have some more information about him I'll share shortly. So Dr. Norman Earl Dunham, as I said, his parents were Levi and Louise. Um, from farming, Norman earns money to attend Clark University in Georgia before going to pre-med courses at Fisk University, which are both historically black colleges. Norman serves his country in World War I, and in the upper right you see his registration card from 1917. Um, using other military records that I found on him, um, I, I also found original application that his wife Sadie did for his military headstone, which is below, that's the original headstone. Um, 
it said that he served and he was in he was a private in the student army training corps from January to December 1918 in World War I. Um, so I also found out recently that his ancestors are going applied for another stone to put on his uh, put on his grave where he's buried at Mary E. Smith Cemetery in Ellesmere, Kentucky and include physician on there so that they can honor his achievements as a doctor. We learned from the World War I registration card of Norman that he was a tall, medium build man with black hair and brown eyes. And what's amazing was Norman was first generation from slavery and succeeded overcoming tremendous odds to, to become a su successful doctor and surgeon. Um, Norman's aunt, descendant, her name's Maria Wilson, provided me this obituary of Norman's father from the December 11th, 1953 Louisville Courier. And it honors his, his Levi's life and notes that he and his sister Eliza were emancipated from Richmond, Kentucky, and then moved to Louisville. So Norman, Mary, Norman finishes Mahari Medical College in 1921, which was another, um, it was a medical school, it was a medical school for African Americans of the time. Both um, his uncle and another um, prominent African American of Kentucky, Dr. James Elmore Randolph, also went to Mahari. Uh, Dr. Randolph graduated from Mahari in 1917 and he and um, and Dr. Randolph was also in World War I in the U.S. Army Medical Reserve Corps. Dr. Randolph came to Covington in 1922 the same year that Norman Dunham so inevitably they knew each other and supported each other and were colleagues. Um, he meets Sadie his future wife in Tennessee while he's in medical school in Tennessee. She was born in 1899 and she is listed as a teacher on a census. Norman and Sadie marry in November 1921 in Tennessee and then they relocate to Covington in 1922 and Norman sets up this practice as um, shown over on the top right 1931 directory in Covington. He's a physician and surgeon, and he has his office at 904 Greenup, um, and his residence is 1222 Russell. Noteworthy is that Dr. Randolph, um, his practice was also in Greenup, not far from there, and Lincoln Grant, Lincoln Grant School is also near there. They go to St. James African Methodist Episcopal Church as well as the Randolphs and the Hargraves. Um, and Norman also served across the river on the staff at Mercy Hospital. He was a Mason and a member of Kappa Alpha PSI. He was a medal, medical examiner for the United Brothers of Friendship and a member of the Tri-City Association. And as I mentioned, he's uh, buried in Mary e. Smith Cemetery. The picture on the bottom right on the far left is his wife, Sadie. And this is inside the home, probably 1222 Russell Street. As I mentioned earlier, I wanted to make note of Norman's maternal uncle, Robert Bird Scott. Um, he was a, he was born. I don't think that date's correct, but he was he was. Um, yeah, those dates aren't correct. I apologize. Um, he dies in 1941, as his obituary on the bottom left says, um, Negro physician and founder of Red Cross Hospital in Louisville. This was a really important um, achievement because as the uh, historical sign in the center says, black physicians were barred from treating patients at public or public or church hospitals during the time. So. Uh, the gentleman listed there started their own African-American hospital, the first 
in the state of Kentucky, and there's a picture of it on the right. So Norman's story from growing up on a farm to becoming one of a small percentage of African-American doctors was undoubtedly inspired by his uncle, Robert Scott. And now we're gonna focus, bring the focus um, to the next residence after the Dunhams move out, uh, who are the Hargraves. So William F. Hargraves Sr. was born in 1902 in Belmont, Ohio to Arthur Hammond Hargraves and Anna, Anna Dora and Lang, Langorg, excuse me. Um, the Hargraves are listed on the 1940 census living at 1222. Um, they, Annie marries, in 1930, Annie Thomas marries William Frederick in Lorraine, Ohio. And after the wedding, the couple come to Covington, and that's where they set up in 1220. Well, they actually live on a different street house in Russell and then move in 19, around 1940 to 1222. Mr. Hargraves taught school, as his obituary on the right says, um, he taught school for over 30 years at Lincoln Grant. He held bachelor's and master's degrees from Miami University and Oxford, Ohio. Um, and also noteworthy is that both the Hargraves attended St. James American Methodist Church which was located at 120 Lynn Street in Covington. And the Dunhams and the Randolphs also attended that church. So next I'd like to talk about his wife just a little bit here. And her name was Anna. Her main name was Thomas. She was born in 1905 and she was from, born in Canada, Ontario, Canada to Philip Thomas and Beatrice Crawford. She graduated from Oberlin College in Ohio and got her BS from the University of Cincinnati and postgraduate, did postgraduate work at Xavier. Um, Annie also taught school. She taught uh, elementary school, whereas her husband taught high school. She taught for over 30 years at uh, Lincoln Grant School and 4th District Elementary School. And then she taught also at, of course, St. James American Methodist Episcopal Church Sunday School. And Annie was a community person. She also helped kids um, during the summers at recreation and community park. And she is the answer to the question of that, uh, who was the popular teacher that a park is named after. It's located on West Robbins and Chesapeake Streets. She's on the picture on the top with her kindergarten class. We have many photos both of Lincoln Grant School and the Hargraves family in our Faces and Places database um, on our website. If you're interested, uh, please check that out. A neighbor who lived next to Annie that I spoke with said she was always teaching and if she wasn't teaching in the schools, she had kids at her house at 1222 helping, helping them learn. So this last slide, these last few slides I just want to mention, these are some of the resources I used to find information other than I want to uh, personally thank Marcia Wilson, a relative of Norman E. Dunn, for all the information she gave me. But come on, if you're, if you're interested in, about any of these, come into our department and we're happy to help you. So the next stop will be the Blue House. Join us Wednesday, July 28th as we explore the history of 542 Greenup Street. And once again, if you have any questions, contact us by email, by phone, or by web. Thanks a lot, have a great day.